the shooting range. In this episode, we continue discussing the most interesting features in Update 1.71, the new era. We take a look at the new maps, the Emperor's Garden and the Fulda Gap. Hotline. The developers answer questions that you've left in the comments. But first, let's start with the king of the long-range shot. Introducing Object 120 Taran Tank Destroyer. So, here we have a top-notch Rank 5 Tank Destroyer. Let's see, how long should the gun of this beast be to be able to pierce, well, everything? Five meters? Maybe six? Ha! <laughs> Leave it to the amateurs. Soviet engineers were serious here, and they equipped the Object 120 Taran with a nine-meter gun. And of course, it's got the best ammunition. The HEAT shells can penetrate 400 millimeters of armor, and the APDS FS shells penetrate 385 millimeters of armor from a 500 meter range. What's really surprising is its very good maneuverability and a turret that actually rotates. Object 120 can make the most out of the landscape and gain advantage over the enemy. And we're not even talking about the reload rate. Oh, actually, we are. It allows the Taran to fire six shots a minute. All other destroyer drivers can only stare and envy these numbers. But everything comes with a price. In this case, it's the armor of the Taran, so thin that a short burst from an anti-aircraft gun can easily kill all your crew members. On the other hand, why would you even place yourself in a position where such a gun can get you? There's no need for that. The Object 120 is the king of long-range attacking. It can effectively destroy targets up to three kilometers away, practically without angle correction. You can land a lot of damage on anyone who gets in your sight, without being noticed and without leaving a comfortable corner of the map. Here are some other tips on how to play this tank destroyer. Don't rush into close combat. Never, ever. If the map is small, find yourself a spot near the respawn point where you can observe most of the map and do your thing from there. The farther you are from the target, the more efficient your actions will be. Next, you want to cover the front of the vehicle, especially the turret, with some decorations. That way, you'll be harder to locate. Your main ammo should be the APDS FS shells. They have good ballistics and, combined with good reload rate, you get higher results. Lastly, remember that your best friends are the trees hide in the forests and in the bushes away from enemy aviation. We couldn't possibly overview all the new features in Update 1.71. Well, we can, but the episode would be about two hours long. So let's talk about some of the cool features. With the new update, we're not only introducing Rank 6 vehicles. Get ready for the long-awaited reactive and composite armor. These were the latest defense measures that engineers used to protect the tanks from the higher-end offensive ammunition. First of all, HEAT shell protection. Composite armor is a combination of a number of protective materials with different density and viscosity. In every nation, engineers had their own ingredients for a good composite armor. They combine standard armor plate with laminated fabric, high-strength steel, ebonite, aluminium, and sometimes even air itself. As a result, the armor was a lot lighter and harder to pierce than the common solid armor plate. In War Thunder, we're trying to consider every possible combination that was used in different vehicles so that our models can be as accurate as possible. Now, reactive armor consists of a lot of combustible containers with some metal plates inside. So when an HEAT shell hits such a container, it dissipates most of the energy that can penetrate armor with the explosion and the plate package. But there's an obvious catch. Every container can protect you 
only once. Another shell hitting the same spot will penetrate armor easily. You also need to keep in mind that the enemy can disembowel your reactive armor with some precise fire from a heavy machine gun, or just using HE shells, or even AP shells. And then he'll switch to HEAT shells and, well, you get the idea. In other news, we've started working on the first-person view for gunners on bombers and ground attack aircraft with a single turret. The update adds this functionality to more than 50 aircraft. Get ready, dogfights will never be the same. Lastly, we've completely recreated the battle task system and updated the war bond shop. First of all, your war bonds now last forever, instead of expiring at the end of the month. The shop is now divided into five levels. You can increase the level of the shop by completing battle tasks. And we also grant you a very nice reward for that. Higher level means, of course, cooler items available for purchase. The difficult battle tasks have been replaced with a new type, special tasks. After completing them, you get a valuable reward and some medals that'll give you access to premium goods. Basically, now you have a robust way of getting some premium tech without investing real money. Oh yeah, the basic battle tasks also get an update. There are three new battle tasks for all modes and difficulties. Activist, Grand Scale Game and Bird Hunt. The new update also brings us two new maps that show us the landscapes of both Germany and Japan. Both of them are quite open and each one has a few tricks to offer. Let's take a closer look. We'll start with the Emperor's Garden. This map is for combined battles. A flat Japanese land with beautiful fields, a few wooden buildings and fences. The landscape is ever-changing, but there's not much to offer in regards to places to hide. Most of them are just little hills that barely reach the height of the tank. The action will be happening in the three main locations divided by some small mountains. So basically, you have three sectors here. The village, the bamboo forest and the emperor's palace. Every segment will take all of your courage and warrior's wit. The way to win is to quickly react when the enemy shows up. Always be on the move and, well, make sure your aim is good. The most useful vehicle here will be a light tank. Using the landscape, they can secretly traverse from one flank to the other and confuse the enemy with aggressive rushes. The other picturesque map has already been compared to a certain famous magic school of witchcraft, the Fulda Gap. This is the place where the armies of East Germany and West Germany collide. The engines are started and the armored armies are on the way. This map is something between the Karpaty and the Kursk maps. Huge open landscapes are joined with forests. The place is heavenly for tankers with ATGMs. The kings of this map will be the sharpshooters and the masters of stationary warfare. Here, you will totally get why you can't live without those smoke screens. Crossing an open space without them basically means destruction. The only protected place here is the castle that is almost in the center of the map. The one who controls it can also control most of the routes in and out. And in here, you can always hide from those ATGMs. The best way to win here is to set up a trap for the opposing forces before they get to you, and then shoot first. If you're able to catch the enemy in the open, nothing can save them. Get ready for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline. Developers answering questions from the comments. The first question comes from a player called Baron Black Music. Dear Gaijin, will we ever see an increase in the maximum number of players in an Air RB match? 
Right now, it rarely exceeds 15 on both teams, and having up to 25 or 30 people would be awesome. Hey, mate, getting more people isn't always a good thing. For example, it makes your personal contribution less meaningful, and your actions have less impact. But we do experiment and with maximum number of players. For instance, in 1.71, we will test a mode with 64 players fighting at the same time. Let's see what happens. Dim S writes, Can you please add the B-36 bomber? It's a magnificent machine. There is no doubt about that, but it doesn't really work within the gameplay framework that we've built for War Thunder, so we don't plan to introduce it to the game, at least for the time being. Cody Kane writes, At the current rate, each tree is getting an armored car. Will the US tree see the M8 Greyhound or similar anytime soon? Well, as you probably already know, American tankers get the M50 Ontos with this patch. Does this beauty with six 106mm recoilless rifles count? And the last question comes from a player that goes by the venerable name of glow la lo la lo lo lu Bruce, will you add the FPS limit to the game soon? Yes, I will personally add the FPS limit to the game the first thing in the morning. On the more serious note, there is always the option to use the V-Sync. It comes with an FPS limit of its own. That's it for today, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on The Shooting Range.